Okay, so um, Hannah, did you have any other questions or do you think, as long as we've got Kim and Courtney and Bonnie here, have you had a chance to look at the um, template as far as what's going to be required on the next phase for the, the, the um, prototype development? Did, did you have any questions specific to that or have you not had a chance to really dig into that yet? Well, actually, we've started looking into that and using the template to structure, um, you know, to follow the structure that we have come up with in our design plan. So it, it's a good template. And uh, no, uh, right at this point, um, there are no questions. The template's okay. pretty straightforward. Yeah, yeah. And it's very helpful. So we're working with that. And uh, I'm not sure when. Well, I think we have a couple of weeks, right, for... Um, yeah, exactly. The, the um, it's due Monday the thirtieth, and mm -hmm. you'll be just to kind of step back from your unit and, and talk in general terms. When you're done with your prototype, submit it the same way you did the de design plan. You just go to the website and click the deliverable submission, and you can attach it either as a link or, um, if you have, you know, however you have it stored. If you have it, if you don't want, if you if it's sometimes they get big and you may not be able to attach it as a, an attachment. Mm -hmm. Normally that works out okay, but if for whatever reason it's a little big and you store it on your own Dropbox or whatever it may be, um, just make sure that there's some way that we can access it. Um, and then just kind of stepping in, just uh, what we'll be talking about later, that, then we'll go through in another form, um, review and evaluation cycle, much like we did with the design plan. But this time we'll be reviewing the prototypes, and so we'll have a week where everybody gets a chance to add their feedback. And right. then that type of thing so right right so I don't know if I can just share I mean we, we have something started with a prototype and oh, I don't know, great. Do, do I have time to kind of quickly go through this and, yes and, please please do right. okay so um, do I just uh, click share screen or do I have the you know what I think I may Jason I think you're here now you I think you've got all the, <laughs> the host give... rights that I that I don't have so I'll let you hello can you hear me we can. Okay, great. Yeah, I, po I apologize for, for coming late. Um, I was preoccupied. Um, do you want... Um, Am I able to share my screen? Hold on one second. Yes, you Maybe should I, be okay. able to. If you take your... Can you? Yep, we can yes. see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So, all right. So, just before we get started with this, so I talked about the theme, right? And I think that was the biggest takeaway from our brainstorming session with the Wendy and the rest of the team is that right now you'll see with the videos and um, the graphics it's it's all over the place <laughs> so our goal is to kind of come up with a kind of stick and focus maybe with that theme of someone going through that journey to an interview and we'll see how that we're going to be able to do this but that's the idea so um, so y your first um, introduction to the unit uh, would be a graphic that relates to that. This is something, and with the um, real life example where, you know, m instead of saying, saying my car won't start, maybe we'll come up with something, you know, that's part of that journey. I'm not sure. But the idea is to start with a real life example. And, um, so I just don't want you to get too hung up on the graphics and visuals at this point. No, yeah, this is great. And, yeah. and I think it's, you know, from a designer standpoint, um, and especially at the prototype stage, this is what you do, right? You just start roughing it out and some stuff sticks and some you abandon. And <laughs> in fact, just to tie this in, Bonnie and Courtney <coughs> reviewed some materials from last fall. And um, maybe this would be a good chance for Bonnie and Courtney to maybe add a couple, two cents as far as, what they require in terms of being able to edit things once it gets on their end, once we submit our deliverables to them, and then they are required to make adjustments down the road. But Bonnie and, and Courtney, do you want to just give us a little peek at what you guys were doing this week with the unit from this fall and how important it is for you to be able to edit um, the students' work? Well, um, Courtney had worked on uh, the content uh, to determine uh, because the plan, the design plan, tells what the content is planned to be, but we don't see the content until we get to the prototype. So, uh, Courtney, uh, what uh, we had a, a very good module in probability, but sometimes there were some issues uh, that with uh, Courtney just 
in a couple of words, what, what were some of the issues that you found with content that you had to deal with? Um, we wanted to change um, a few of the definitions. Um, a couple of the problems were not quite what we were looking for, just things like that we had to kind of go through and edit a little bit. Okay, and then primarily, uh, so the one on probability was very uh, graphic uh, and had a lot of graphics. It had a lot of capabilities in PowerPoint, like jumping to a different script. All of that was terrific. However, once we start modifying and maybe take out a screen or something, uh, that that then we have to change that. But number one, it was not in the template, and so you you have this in the template. That's looking very good that you have, and so. Uh, if we have to go back and say, oh, now we have to put this all in the template, that becomes um, <clears throat> labor intensive. Uh, that we uh, So terrific that you're doing this in the template. Uh, and if you have any kind of resources that you attach to, uh, such as a, uh, you know, a worksheet, we want to make sure that uh, you have it in Word and not in a PDF. If you uh, attach to a or have a link, you want to make sure that that link is alive and that it works. That uh, it and that if you do a link to a video, that you follow the guidelines of telling us what the name of the video is. Don't just put in the web, um, you know, the web uh, link uh, verbiage, which is you know HTTPS that that kind of thing. Go ahead and put the name in. So. It, all of that is in the style guide, so it, if you follow that, sometimes it seems glorious at first. But, um, uh, what you do is don't worry about that until you do your, you know, until you're finalizing it. That's what I would say. Don't, you know, go ahead and, um, and develop your strategy. That's the most important, and your content is the most important. But then go back and say, okay, now I'm ready to publish this, just like if you're doing APA style, now what do I have to do to make sure <laughs> that it fits that, okay? That's right. perfect. And, and I just wanted to use this as an example. I'm sorry I hijacked a second of, <laughs> of Hannah's um, presentation because you did a great job getting, uh, this is exactly what we'd love to see you start doing, just start hammering away on the prototype. And I, I can't reiterate enough what um, Bonnie just said as far as we are most concerned with the content you're providing. It, it le less so than how pretty things look because that can come later and we really want to make sure that the students that the activities and things that you have the students engaged in are appropriate and um, and that they have learning value so okay. uh, I think I think you're doing a great job just okay. starting to bang this out on your um, on your on your prototype okay good so let me give me one more minute and let me just quickly sure. go through that the first unit because the, the, there's gonna be four units one for every uh, sorry four um, sections, mm -hmm. one for every objective, and they're going to be similar in uh, the, the workflow. So, um, you know, the course is going to, of course, um, start with a short description about the course, the navigation, and now we're going to go into what are the unit objectives. Um, you know, and that's going to be uh, restated in uh, learners' vocabulary. <laughs> okay. Right. Right, and and then you know we dive into each section, and again everything's going to be rewarded using learners, you know, vocabulary. And um, uh, we're going to start with a video again. Don't get hung up on this video. It's just the idea of we're going to introduce the scientific method, and then kind of take them through in an activity, or a work. What I'm calling a worked example. That's a real life example. So we have something here. Um, so we introduce the six steps, and then after every introduction uh, we're going to do a, a practice you know just we're going to find out um, either questions or have them reflect on something uh, um, that we're still working on the details of that but so once we present the whole idea the six steps then we're going to go into each step and spend a little more time on every step so asking the question we're going to present a worked example and walk them through it and then we're going to have them think about um, you know a problem and how they would come up with their questions and we're going to repeat that for every step in the uh, scientific method so it's going to be a similar approach where we would provide the worked example go through it describe what it is to do a background research for that problem where we've presented i can't uh, my car is not starting and then have them um you know think of a real life example and have them reflect and once we go through that we're going to do another 
set of uh, practicing your skills by uh, what we're calling a formative assessment. So we're still here reporting your results, practice your skills. Uh, and yes, and this is where we're gonna have them go through the, everything that we've presented. And we haven't thought about that example right here, but another real life example where the learner would be asked to uh, go e through each step of the scientific method and then we provided feedback at the same time. So that's the structure and we're going to repeat that uh, for every uh, objective. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. <laughs> so <laughs> feedback, additional feedback from everyone if there is any. Okay. Well, you guys have a, you, you have a good chunk already done. This is, yeah, yeah, this is, uh, I think, um, I know that Courtney is, um, I'm glad that she has mentioned that one of the areas that the learners struggle with is where they're doing the experiment. So um, we'll, we'll spend some time on that area. Right. That's it. I, if, unless anyone has a feedback from me, I'm done with my presentation. That's great. Thank you for going first. <laughs> Jason, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. I think, uh, or actually, uh, Paige, I, I think, is anyone from your group or unit two? I don't think so. So, Jason, I don't know. We might skip right hey, to you. Paige, you're yeah. muted. Oh, sorry, Paige. I don't know if you're trying to talk. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I just said, yeah, there's no one here yet. Sorry. So Jason, I don't know if you guys want to walk through unit three or what you want to do. Hey, how's it going? Um, <laughs> I, think, I think that our group, we did a pretty good job of going through uh, and kind of fine tuning, and fine lining all the things that uh, were mentioned previous to um, the evaluation and the, the feedback from Grace Centers of Hope. And so we had developed some questions and I think that Willette is here, there she is. And Elaine, I think, is also here. I thought I saw her. Yep, she's yeah. here too. So, uh, do you guys have specific questions for Grace Centers of Hope besides the other ones? I know you just sent. I have a CC on that. Um, well, yeah, I mean, Courtney said we can go over the hour time limit. I, I, again, I'm just worried about that. I'm like, how much over and, and things like that because, mm -hmm. you know, that this could be three hours, six hours. I mean, you know, it just concerns me because uh, now we are going to be doing the um, mixed numbers in addition to the multiplying, dividing, adding, and subtracting. So that's like five concepts mm -hmm. in an hour. I, that's really uh, Courtney and Kim's call. Uh, uh, they're the ones that, uh, uh, you know, are in charge of those students. So, okay. Uh, are you Courtney and Cameron? Yeah. You got a response to that? Um, are you worried about like the amount of time you think you're going to have to put into it? Like extra time? Is that the concern or is it, it's just really about, um, how long it's going to be on our end? Well, I, I, I'm not particularly worried on our end necessarily, but on the students end, you know, so practice for math, usually, you know, a minimum of 25 problems. Practice helps embed, you know, the concept. And so we have, you know, we have to teach them or explain to them how to multiply, divide, add, and subtract, and then Theoretically, they would, you know, and explain mixed numbers, and so that's quite a bit of time and practice also for them. So, I, I mean, if the instructional module is only an hour, and then the practice and the work that's separate from the instructional module is unlimited, I guess, I don't want to say unlimited, but, you know, not included in the module, mm -hmm. then okay, uh, that would be fine. But, you know, trying to embed a new concept, especially a mathematic concept, and having the um, 
instruction, you know, limited to a, a time frame. I, I guess I, I guess that just concerns me. You know, from our end, you can you can teach them a concept, get to a slide where they stop, and then have them practice. And that would be fine because then they could pick up as soon as they practice, we could, you know, you could give them, we could have a word document as a supplement, for example, where okay. they could practice adding fractions. So they would stop as far as the presentation goes, then do that practice word doc and then have somebody correct it. That's, you know, one of our tutors or, or Courtney and myself and then we could review it with them and then they could go on to the next section. So from our end, that's fine. Okay. Okay. I mean, I just, you know, I guess when somebody tells me they want one hour of instruction, I usually, you know, I, I want to make sure like if that has to include assessment, if that has to include practice, uh, I, I did a project similar to this for, um, nurses for dementia and it, it it was required to be including the practice and the assessment no more than 60 minutes because they got a certain number of credit hours based on the entire amount of time you know applied so that that's why I, I so if so if the if the one hour isn't you know really that big of an issue in terms of the practice and the assessment and everything else and then that's fine yeah, so they may do just addition and subtraction um, part of a module in, you know, in, in one time frame that they're with us for that day. And then uh, Courtney will give them supplemental homework on top of what you have them do. And then, you know, they may come back the next time and pick it up at multiplication and division. Okay. Yeah. And, and also, um, uh, I just want to add my two cents kind of being the <laughs> balancing your time because clearly everybody volunteered X amount of time. You committed to, you know, I think it was 50 hours. And so kind of tying into what Courtney's question was too, um, much like if you bid a project for $10,000 and suddenly the, it looks like it's now going to cost really $30,000 to do what they really asked, you know, what, as the scope starts to creep, which happens all the time, uh, yeah. then, then just make sure, you know, then just you know, put on your big girl pants or whatever and say, you know what, I have to stand up for my time and I'm kind of you know, projecting out to how, if this were a real project with real money and, you know, you have to be thinking about feeding your family mm -hmm. or whatever. Right. So I, it's absolutely fine for you to come back to us and say, this this is now going to triple the amount of time that I thought it was going to take because now our scope has creeped. And so then, you know, just come back to us and say, this is what we can get done in the 50 hours of design time. And it will give you one hour of mod, one hour of, of design time. So that's absolutely appropriate. And we were really looking for you to do that. Okay. Courtney, well, Courtney, if we were to give up one thing, do you think it would be the mixed numbers? Um, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> I'm trying to think through it. I, I yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, and just uh, even though this is not my content area, I think uh, one of the things that I heard from uh, and I forget who was speaking. Who's the designer that was speaking? I'm, I'm sorry. Elaine. Uh, Elaine. Yeah. Elaine. Elaine is that even though it might require, according to learning theory, 20 problems, I think that's the one place that you can modify and make things 10. Okay. Uh, you know, because while, because just as uh, Kim said, they, the uh, Grace Centers is in their education department, they have some of these things that they will augment with. So what you're adding is also something that's augmenting because they already have a program in math, but there are some gaps. And so uh, we're not trying to create absolutely everything. We're, we're filling some gaps. And I didn't, you know, I kind of made light of it as far as saying you'll put on your big girl pants, but this happens all the time as, as I'm sure some of you who are, are familiar with design work, it's, oh, just, yeah. it's just, it's scope creep. I mean, as much as, you know, I wish I could have everybody do every unit of every second of the GED, 
But, you know, then that's why we have that section in the design plan is like to, to very closely define what the scope is of the project you're working on and continuously refer back to that. And if, if it appears suddenly we're adding objectives or we're adding content areas that were beyond what we were originally intending, uh, yeah. you know, then we need to have a, a nice frank conversation um, to say, well, this is really what we can get done at this uh, point in time. Mm -hmm. Can I, that's fantastic. I'm glad that we brought that up. Can I just add just a little bit that could possibly help? We talked about reducing the amount of practice questions, which is possible. Yeah. Um, I think at the heart of the, the, the problem is the content versus the mastery. So that the content is present as mathematic content. And we have adding and subtracting um, uh, fractions. And then we have multiplying fractions. That, that's the content that we're dealing with. Now, the amount of time it takes to master those things are going to vary. And so yeah. it, requires, it, require, it requires practice time. And so what we're talking about is, is maybe creating the modules that would be necessary to instruct and then adding those supplemental practice questions or practice worksheets or whatever you want to call them in there and saying, hey, this is going to take some time if whoever is sitting with the um, individual student wants to take the time to do that. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that that kind of helps with us kind of conceptualizing this mm -hmm. a bit and kind of separating those things. Oh, okay. All right. Very that's well put. <laughs> that, that, that clears up some of our concerns, I, I think. And, you know, I don't want to overwhelm the students either. I don't want, and that was one of the things that I experienced in another project. You know, yeah. we, when we got the initial content from the subject matter experts, there are literally 93 slides for a one hour presentation oh, and man. that's very overwhelming you know that somebody who would look at that would just you know be i think probably so intimidated at the outset that they would resist even beginning it and so you know i want to be sensitive we want to be sensitive to the fact that you know, maybe these people are already a little nervous and frustrated and we don't want to just like put this thing in front of them that is so massive and overwhelming that they just don't even want to start. And, and, and I would add to the practice part too, is that sometimes uh, if you have 20 to 30 uh, practice elements that a person who is already having struggles mm -hmm. after they've done three of them and they have issue, you know, and if they have problems, they look at my goodness, I have another 20, 22 to do. <laughs> and so, you know, usually 10 is something that's okay. not too overwhelming. Okay. That's good advice. <laughs> yeah. That's good advice. Thank you. Yeah. And I, 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 uh, so I forget, I think it was the social studies unit or one of them that mentioned the ARCS model. I think all of you are familiar with it, but it, I, I, and, and Elaine, you were alluding to it is that we do have to develop the student's confidence. So we don't want to, uh, the, we don't want things to be so easy that they are not learning anything, but, uh, they have to have it where they're, they, they, the instruction leads to an achievable objective. Okay, right, right. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. so that was good. I don't know if Willette, did you have any comments or is that, did Elaine pretty much touch on your questions? Yes, and uh, we had discussed it before um, as a group. And, okay. Uh, yes, Elaine did uh, do a great job of covering any concerns I had. I'm looking forward to receiving those feedback from Courtney. Um, that's going to get forwarded over, and so we'll all be on the same page. So I'm great. Did you guys receive my email from this morning? I did, but it. I just forwarded it to the group. I didn't realize that it didn't CC them, and uh, so I, I forwarded it to the to the group. So, okay, thank you. Thank you, but and thank you for those responses. And they were, uh, you know, it was it was very well uh, uh, explained. So thank you. Okay, of course. Okay, well, Jason, you want to just um, wind things? I guess group two is not here. Um, so cool. I'll, I'll let be quiet and let you talk. <laughs>
I love it when you when you facilitate that. I, it's great. So yeah, we're, we're short one one group. Um, hopefully that they they get their answer their questions answered and pages here so she can kind of summarize for them if need be uh, if they need a resource to go to and uh, Bonnie and and um, Courtney and Kim have already made themselves readily available to answer questions and they've been doing a great job at that. Again, I do apologize that I was absent. It's it's not. Um, not a usual thing that I do, uh, but I was immersed in my in my comps, so I and I had my my wife in my ear as well. So <laughs> I, I was I was a, I don't know how I missed it, uh, but uh, I think that this was a great session. I think that there was um, we had a visual which was great from from the first group, um, and as they as uh, Hannah I believe unpacked her feedback and and unpacked her lesson pl her plan the plan that the, her and her group came up with. Um, I think Elaine did a great job of asking a very, very important and powerful question, which Jen added to this concept of, of um, scope creep, which is a very real and authentic issue in our field. Um, I think this collectively, we got together. One last question. All right. That's fantastic. What's your question, Elaine? Do we need to submit a revised design plan? You will. Um, that's well, 30th. Or the okay. uh, that's the yeah, prototype that's and the design plan. So the revised design plan gets submitted with the draft prototype. No, no need to submit a uh, revised design plan. So just just, okay. just transfer everything onto a prototype. So it's okay. kind of like actually, okay. Okay. I see. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. And I would, as a caveat, I mean, naturally, with many clients, they do want a revised, uh, uh, you know, yeah. design plan. But we're we're at a, in a short development period <laughs> and so uh, we do not okay yeah. okay mm -hmm. I think I put that note on somebody's uh, 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 feedback uh, I forget who which one but no need to revise it or, but put it into the prototype okay okay thanks mm -hmm. um, this is Kim Paige I do have some feedback for your team great great um, do you want me to review that now? Yes, that'd be great because they will be watching the webinar. Okay, yeah. so my apologies because I was on vacation when the whole thing came through, so I did not give any feedback. And uh, Bonnie had grabbed me at a recent event and said, you know, we ought to take a look at that because it seemed like it was an awful big project for the short amount of time that you had. Um, you know, kind of like Elaine was concerned. So mm -hmm. I wanted to go through a few things with you just to make sure that we're on the same page. Okay. So um, specific to objective one, where you have the sub objective is to um, identify the key contributions and the ideas that were sig signified in the documents and you had referred to the key documents on page five, mm -hmm. where you uh, talked about the, uh, for example, the key documents were the Magna Carta, the Mayflower, all of those. Mm -hmm. I think we can strike out of there the, after the letters from the Birmingham jail, I think the the landmark decisions of the Supreme Court and other key documents. If you go b scroll back up, right there. So the, right there, it says the key documents. I think you can take those Supreme Court decisions and the other key documents out because you could get into a ridiculous amount of stuff there. And so I want to make sure that the things that we have seen are definitely just very briefly just understanding what those did contribute and in an overall, you know, very, very brief thing, you know, even, even to have a one liner to say, you know, uh, the declaration of independence, this was the letter from, you know, the uh, people of the, you know, the United States, well, it wasn't the United States, it was actually the colonists to, you know, to England declaring that they did not want to be, that they wanted to be independent. That might even be all you need to write on that. Great. 
And it's just giving them a very, very brief overview on that. Um, on this second objective, and here where you have those um, sub-objectives, that would be on page 10. Sorry, I know I'm going all over. Whoever's scrolling, you're doing a great job. Jason. <laughs> Jason, thank you. Um, on that sub-objective, that A, identify the chronological structure of events taking place. Um, I, I think the order with which you present it will cover that. Okay. And they don't necessarily need to know. They're going to know the War of 1812 happened in 1812, but they don't need to get as granular as understanding dates, but more uh, concepts. So I love when you did the outcome of the War of 1812, just as simple as that, uh, those key contributions of Thomas Jefferson. Again, you don't have to list a whole lot. There could be one or two things. Um, the origin of the U.S. Indian policy, that could get lengthy, so you might, we might want to, we might want to talk about what you're going to put as far as content for that. And as your team is going through, please feel free to send any and all, you know, as, as you develop a slide for that, please feel free to send that and say, do you think this is too much? Do you think this is too little? They really just need an an overview. And I think kind of understanding who our students are, they, they really have not absorbed anything about American history. Yeah. So to just even give them any brief overview, and, and, and I want to just say brief is really the key word there, is to just give them a brief overview to say, oh, I get it. This is how we became the United States. Oh, I get it. We had, um, you know, we had some wars. And this is kind of how they, you know, when we had this war, then this is why this changed. And, you know, I, I, I want to make sure that you don't overcomplicate it because there is so much content here. In the GED book, it is literally two double-sided pages that cover everything that you guys are talking about. Yeah. So anything that you can give to just give those big overviews over a large portion of time, at least gives them the context in which things happened. That's very helpful. They, you know, we're having trouble, um, I think, having them feel comfortable with saying, make it very, very on the surface, kind of like what you're saying. Yes. Change, blah, blah, blah. And I think them hearing you say this when they watch this webinar will really help reassure them that they're, they're going deep enough and covering it enough. I think that'll be really helpful. Then um, my last is on page 14, where we talk about um, history after 9-11. Um, I think A, B, and F are the only things that you need to hit on. Okay, great. I think that some of those other things, uh, there's still history being made. <laughs> and right now, the GED is not addressing really any of those things. Um, you know, Guantanamo Bay changed just recently. Yeah. And so I think, um, yeah, I think that they don't even, they're not even touching on those things. So I, I think A is really important to understand why did 9-11 happen. Um, again, I think uh, B is important to understand that. And then, and then F, like I said, Homeland Security, they need to understand what that is. Right. And the rest of it can just be scratched. So my apologies for not getting this feedback sooner. I feel like you guys did all this work and now I'm telling you to scrap I, half of it, but I think it'll help in the long run. I think one, so. Just page one of the positive things about your uh, 
uh, design document was the thoroughness with which yes. you did it and the analysis from the learning theory uh, uh, point of view. Uh, I think one of the things that I did bring up was that uh, you, you, that was, it was very heavy on analysis, but very light on strategy on, on how that that was going to take place. And yeah. so if you're talking to real clients, they want to, they also want to know, well, how are you going to make sure that the student gets this? And, and what are they going to do with this information? So uh, that was my primary uh, evaluation. Very thorough. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I was, uh, uh, it, I even made the comment, it, it reflected a high level of understanding of, of learning theory and of the design process. It, it's, it's just, you know, sometimes we do that. We, we spend a whole lot of time on analysis and uh, we, we forget that the real key, you know, one of the real keys is showing the client how we're going to make sure that the learner um, actually goes through this and, and uh, it, it, it becomes uh, a learning process. So, so thank you. It, it, very good on that part, on the analysis part. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, this might help too, Paige, mm -hmm. is that there are four concepts that are really big, especially in the writing part. And that is that their understanding of checks and balances, their understanding of separation of powers, their uh, understanding of individual rights versus the rights of the whole. That's very important, yeah. Okay. And then state versus federal. Oh, and the and those concepts, this is the background for them understanding those concepts. Great. So I think that, you know, that maybe puts it in a little better context, too, to understand that once they get this background, they're able to get these four concepts a little bit more clearly to be able to write about them, to be able to conceptualize ideas, and to be able to answer questions based on that. Great. So basically, whatever they're including for each topic, they should keep in mind, can they speak to one of these four things? So checks or balances, separation of powers, can they tie that in? And it kind of gives them an example, the learners, an example through history of those four things, the so state versus yes. the world. Okay. Yeah. I now, uh, uh, Kim, if you differ with this, please say it. But one of the things that it seems to me that this, because that you're, I think that what you're wanting students to be able to do is to write about these things and analyze it. Is that correct, Kim? They will have to do that. That's only one section. Yeah. Them understanding the history behind why this stuff is in place, that's, that's, the thing. So when they understand that uh, we had this Declaration of Independence and we formed this government after you know our own government based on how we wanted things to be, then they kind of, they understand checks and balances. Mm -hmm. They understand separation of power. Okay. Um, so they understand state versus federal so because we can tie it back to remember when you learned in American history about this. And, and so that helps as, as we're going through and they're learning about other things. So like okay. the civil rights movement, you're going to have a lot of state versus federal. Yes. So you could tie that in. Okay. Yeah. And then we can go, we can actually, when we sit down and they're learning about state versus federal in another area of their GD, because only one is this U.S. history, um, can say, remember when you learned about you know, about this concept when you went through, or remember when you learned about this in history, when you went through that PowerPoint, this is how that, that's related. Great, great. So it just is a very brief overview. You know, we, it's funny because we, we've learned all this stuff since, you know, we were in first grade. Mm -hmm. um, but many times they, some of them have only gone up to, sixth or seventh grade and they don't even remember any of that so and they definitely didn't have American history in 11th grade so mm -hmm. um, this is just that brief overview to them that they don't need to know dates they don't need to really know too many people the ones that you hit on are the important ones mm -hmm. great 
So, Kim, may I ask a, a question based on one of the uh, feedback I think that I gave? Is will they be asked to, to write about this as well? I mean, there there will be one question that it might be about the Vietnam War. It might be about a document. Is that correct? There will be one extended response that they have to do in the social studies, okay. and they will, uh, if they have this base knowledge, and they can put that in there as an example. That is when they end up getting points for that. Okay, then may I ask, uh, will it, would it be helpful for this design team to provide a, 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 a model or a partial model of a, a, an, a, a response to a hypothetical question that they might get? Uh, no, we'll cover that okay. in a different area. Okay. That's, that's all, that's... Yeah, we'll cover that in a different area. That's, that's kind of at the end of their... Okay all of the things that they've learned. All right. Good question. Awesome. Okay. This is going to be really helpful to the group, probably more so than if they would have brought questions, because I think you kind of cut the core of what their concerns are, mm -hmm. and mostly the scope and um, those sorts of things. So I think you really covered it. It's great. And, and like I said, any questions that they have, you know, is this getting in too deep? Is this... They can send those questions as they come up, and, and I can answer those. Thank you. Great. Okay. Can you just uh, reiterate what you said? And I, I just maybe didn't understand. I'm starting. I was just typing on the Google Doc to help the um, page in the group out. And so you mentioned that the, they have to do the extended response, and I think it ties into Bonnie's question, but you don't necessarily want an example of an extended response within this module, right? Right. Not within this module. But you're saying when they create their extended re response, they may have the freedom to pick some, one of these as a content area to write no. their... Oh, okay. No, it'll be one of these... It, it, one of these four concepts will be in, will be in the extended response. It's going to be what the extended response is really looking for. Oh, okay, got it, got it, got it. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, great. So while, while Jen is doing that, I'll kind of look through really quickly her closing remarks here that she wrote down. And if she wants to jump in, she can jump in. So we got some upcoming due dates. Uh, March 23rd, that's next Monday. Well, this Monday coming up, we have our individual reflections that are due. I believe it's the third one. Uh, we have the prototypes that are due a week after that. That's March 30th. Again, there's no revision to the design plan. We're moving straight into the prototypes. Um, that are based on our design plans and based on the feedback that we we got individually with our facilitators as well as uh, as well as this particular piece which was designed to help us get face-to-face -face, uh, feedback directly from Grace Centers of Hope. Uh, the prototype evaluations, I'm reading that from the screen here. Prototypes will be sent out for evaluation the review week for it says review the week of March 30th so similar to the design plan. Is that Yep, exactly, okay. yeah. All right, and then second is the online evaluation form prototypes. Please review these. Yeah, and so just to give you, I think it's kind of helpful when you're putting your prototype together to see what types of things that we're looking for within the prototype, and it's slightly different from the design plan because now we're getting into a little bit more of the you know, media selection, um, aesthetics, things like that. Um, so you may want to take a peek at that before you get too far into the prototype development to see what types of things we'll be looking at in the evaluation. It may help you out. Yeah, and again, use use the template provided. And use the template provided, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> cool. Uh, some other cool things. It looks like, yes, our um, AECT proposal was accepted. So one of them was, I think we're waiting for the other one, right? So your work was selected to be showcased at the fall conference. This is really exciting stuff. Over the next couple of months, we will be requesting some testimonials and some interesting feedback from you to promote at this event, a uh, showcase that is, is happening at AECT. We encourage you to register and show up, and it's going to be a really, really cool, really great event. I'm on the, uh, the committee for the uh, conference uh, as we're putting it together, so some really exciting things are happening, some new things, some fresh things that we haven't yet seen at AECT will be coming to town. So we're excited about that. 
A reminder, informed consent for evaluation research of this particular project is in process as a follow-up to a prior email. I believe that uh, Jen sent an email of the consent form through SurveyMonkey. So there's the link there. And is yeah, our, just, to, just put a super quick plug in for that. So one of our main reasons for doing Designers for Learning is to conduct research on design practices and also service learning. And so in order for us to be able to evaluate your work as part of our research, um, just please click on that link and, and type your name um, unless you're really freaked out about <laughs> your stuff being included in research. But that's the, that's the crux of that. Absolutely. So please do that. Another shameless plug, next week we're having a, a webinar featuring games and learning. Um, and we're using, we're, we're going to unpack some of the research that I'm doing with Boys in Gaming. Um, it's an AECT, slash, well it is ACT, we're in collaboration with the GSA and the um, uh, Culture and Learning and Technology. So this should be really exciting. Esports is coming to town. We have the president of eSports that's going to be speaking about that. So that, that'll be fun. So please don't forget those things at the end there, the closing um, and that survey. Please have that signed. And is there anything else, Jen? Nope, I'm done. Well, fantastic. Thanks for taking over for me there in the beginning there. Um, well, I hope we all are well. And if there are any other questions, comments, concerns, that's well, thanks everybody for joining us. Um, yeah. It's great, Thank Kim you. and Bonnie and Courtney and all the designers. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. This will be up tomorrow. So take care. Bye bye. Sounds good. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. Hi. Thank you, everyone. Bye.